For over a decade, the National Pro-Life Religious Council, Priests for Life, the National Clergy Council, Faith in Action, and other groups based in Washington and having a national outreach for the pro-life movement have gathered on the morning of January 22nd, the sad anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision, and have prayed and praised and worshiped the Lord in the name of life. We will see here today, as we are gathered in the Dirksen Senate building, clergy and laity from all Christian denominations coming together for one simple purpose, to affirm that Jesus is Lord and that He is Lord of human life, He is Lord of human freedom, He is Lord of our choices, and He commands us to go forward and to defend life in His name. This service is called the National Memorial for the Preborn and their mothers and fathers. We're remembering the victims of abortion, the babies first of all, and also their parents, because they are obviously harmed as well by the terrible destruction that abortion brings. Thank you for being here today. There are prayers ascending throughout the world for peace. But we are here to proclaim today and we are here to march today saying that there can be no peace in the world until there is peace in the womb. There can be no justice and equality for human beings until there is justice and equality for the unborn. More unborn children will be killed in America on this very day than all the troops that have been killed in the Iraq war since it began. And more unborn children will be killed in America in the next five days than, it, and than all the people who have ever been put to death by capital punishment since we've been keeping records. <coughs> this tragedy must end and it will end right. because of the persevering witness of God's people symbolized by those gathered here today. Yes. Thank you. We reaffirm today that the almighty God of the universe who stretches from one end of eternity to the other and fills the universe in all its parts became a little baby and that little baby who was born is the God of the universe. He is not just a great prophet or a great leader. He is God incarnate. We affirm that today. We are gathered from all parts of the Christian spectrum this morning and we affirm that this God who became a human being, who took on a human body, human blood, a human soul, shed that blood freely and it is only in that shed blood that we have the forgiveness of our sins. Yes. And we run to Him today. We run to that cross yes. and we let that blood pour over us and we acknowledge today together that that act of sacrifice destroyed the power of death and that that man who was God rose from the dead and is with us today alive. Yes. We further affirm today that he who came is coming back. And that when he comes back, it will not be behind some small cave in Bethlehem. It will be for every eye to see. Every eye shall see him even of those who pierced him. And every knee shall bend in the heavens, on the earth and under the earth. His friends, his enemies, those who sought to be near him, those who tried to run away from him, those who obeyed him, those who persecuted him. Every knee will bend and every tongue confess yes. that Jesus Christ yes. is Lord. Yes, we are united. Yes, there is unity among Christians. Yes, these truths we all affirm and we affirm something further. That this God of ours does not allow us simply to come together and to say, Yes, thank you Lord for rescuing me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being my Savior because I'm helpless. I couldn't save myself. Thank you for coming down and minding my business. You didn't just stay up in heaven and mind your own business. You saw me in need and you came to rescue me. And we affirm today that this God doesn't allow us just to come into a place like this or into any church or into the sanctuary of our own hearts and just thank Him for that gift without turning it around and saying, there's my brother, there's my sister, they're in need, they need to be rescued too, and I'm going to rescue them. Amen. 